Welcome friends, it is I, your last guy, and it's time for the vlog, and in the background is a Thor game, because, well, that's a tier 5, so, it's a Thor game, we're either using the first Thor arena, or first Thor conquest, I can't remember which one, just to show how long it's been for Thor, like, where he's been and where he is now, huh? Now, let's just talk about the patch, we didn't do a patch in this preview, it was only skins, no balance, I'm like, alright, let's, eh, we don't need to really do one right now, besides, because we're doing StarCraft, we're doing the crap out of StarCraft, so, we'll just focus on StarCraft. I am all the way up to the epilogue in StarCraft. Once I finish that, I'll be done with the game. That'll be great, and then all that LP will come out. It's a really fun game, and I really like the story. I have some complaints here and there, but for the most part, really liking it. And y'all should check it out. Why not? Okay, so, Smite, the patch skins, uh, they're all great, all of them. Except for that tier 5 Thor skin. Okay, uh, I like the idea. It's a cool idea. You, you become... Because, uh, when you ult, you get your mech suit, that's kind of cool, when you ultimate, and then when you die, you lose your mech suit, that's kind of cool, that's cool. But, uh, it's ugly as balls before you get there. Like, Archon Thantos looked pretty cool all the way through, like, he's pretty bare at the start, but he just looks kind of cool the whole way through. Uh, Tier 5 Thor, not as much, it's, I, no, no, I just, I don't like it as much as I think I could, like, it's just not as good as I think it could be. So it's a bit disappointing there. All the other skins are amazing. Dubstep, um, Janice is great. Uh, uh, Child's Play, Scylla looks great. Nutcracker, freaking uh, Apush looks great. What? It's not Furious, it's Furiona Bologna. Yeah, Furiona Bologna looks great. Like, they all look really good. The Kepper skins look good. Kiron looks ridiculous. I won't really know until we get the plan when he comes out. My one real problem, or two real problems with Thor is... Meh? Because he's got so many goddamn skins already? And it's another assassin. I would have really liked it if we had, you know, not another assassin. Just they varied up, like, five years would be all five roles. That would have been great. That would have been really cool. Then we got another freaking assassin. I'm kind of surprised they didn't have it May make it a, uh... A viewer vote, not viewer, uh, player vote. I'm surprised it wasn't a player vote, like, last year. That shows you the popularity of who's going to get picked. You know, I mean, who's going to get a lot of buys? Probably didn't do that. It, Iris always makes these weird decisions. It's weird to me. It's like, oh, hey, it's going to be Thor. But not everyone plays Thor. If you made it the most popular vote, you're going to get the most bang out of it. That's how I feel about it. I'm going to get it because, of course, I'm going to get it because I'm going to buy all the Odyssey. I'm going to have it. I'm going to play it. But I don't really like the skin all that much. I don't care for it. And I'm kind of just, I'm disappointed by it. I really am. It's just too bad. If you like the Thor skin, I'm happy for you. I just not. That's just how it is on that. But, um, wait, are they seriously having a patch at the same day as Paladins coming out? You think they would have had Paladins come out on a off week, right? I, I just realized they're going to have Paladins and a patch at the same time. Wow, that's crazy. Hmm. Now, there's a lot of talk about the Thor skin and then the data mining and all that stuff. And let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, the thing about this is, there was a lot of flack to data mining, though it didn't really, it wasn't really responsible for what happened with this whole thing. So, Hyros accidentally puts the PTS out before the patch notes. And a bunch of people get into the PTS, which I don't know who would have thought, let's just check the PTS before this happens. Well, they did. And they found the tier 5 Thor skin, and also data miners were also data mining future stuff as well. Because that's what data miners do whenever the PTS comes out. And all this stuff comes up, and then... Some people got really mad at the data miners for what they were doing. And so there was a whole lot of arguing over that during and after the patch notes. Now you get why some high-risk staff would not be happy about it, but maybe not all of them knew what was going on when it came to at least the Thor skin. And that was a bit of a blunder on high res's part, though. Um, high res spends all this time making these amazing things, and they tease them out before the patch notes, and then they finally show you them. And they do that so they can have a little fun with the stuff they made. That's cool. The problem is data mining sometimes robs them of being able to show off the cool stuff. Sometimes data mining spoils the surprise. And you get why some high-risk staff would be annoyed by that. Data mining done correctly is a really good way to just be more teases and slight spoils. Just let people know like, oh, this is coming. That's coming up. And that's the good part of data mining. The bad part of data mining is uh, when people consider data mining as law. Because some things are things that may come along, and some things are things that will come along. And it creates a lot of confusion. This is one of the things Hi-Rez is not happy about. And it's a good point, is that there is confusion to this. Uh, because there are plenty of gods that data, got data mined that have not come out. And, peop and people who really want these gods are just really unhappy about it, even years later. 
And that's just a thing is you cannot guarantee believe everything data mining shows. That is for sure. Remember in Invisible Medusa or Set or a couple of other gods, Morgan? There's a bunch of things that data mining shows that don't actually happen. So you have to believe as you can believe they have a picture of it. Maybe there's a good chance of it, especially when they got a skin picture. But when it comes to just saying there's a god, you can't really believe it as much. And that's just how it is. Most of the time, data mining gets something true. And sometimes they don't. Now, one argument I don't really like is the data miners. Well, the main one, uh, Faria. They're like, if you didn't want us to data mine, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be so lazy and make it harder for us to find it. And that is a very flawed argument because data miners are data miners. They will find a way. That is a thing about data miners is they will get in there and get whatever they want to find. That's just how it is. Making it harder is just gonna actually just be a waste of time. And the reason why it's so easy for data miners to get in there is not laziness, but because there has been this relationship of data miners find some things and then they show them off, and then that is a way to tease some viewers who want to look at the data mining stuff already. That way they can, they can get hyped in that way. But the line gets crossed when the data miners, if they really do get in there and start grabbing stuff, they shouldn't be seeing it and they start showing it off. That's the big fear. And if that ever happens in a major way, then there would be a lot more blowback from high res. It's mostly just staff annoyed, but they're not going to take any big steps to stop data mining. They're just, they want data mine to b dial it back a little bit, I think is what I've seen from just all the different people talking about it. Then there's this, just this whole talk about monetizing data mining and just the arguments about all that. And we're not even going to get into that. That's a, not even worth talking about. That's just the whole thing. And there's, there really should not be a, a line drawing about this. There's a lot of people drawing lines with data mining. Like, data mining itself is just banning a bunch of people, like the data mining site. Which is the wrong way to go about it. Definitely the wrong way to go about it, but that's the reaction they've taken. Uh, it's just a murky thing. Data mining has its uses, but there is a line you can cross. As is with everything, there is a line everyone can cross when working with a game. Content creators can cross the line in different ways. Streamers can cross the line in different ways. Pro players can cross the lines in different ways. There's just things you can do to cross the line. That's just about it. And data miners do have a line they can cross. And if they cross it, then it's not going to be good for anybody. And when it happened uh, with the recent patch, it felt like they did cross that line. And that's why people reacted the way they did. And that's just how it is. My stuff, Kieran. We're going to play Kieran when he comes out. That's, that's about it. And we're going to try to make videos with him. But the thing is, he comes out of freaking Paladin's Day. I just complained about this. Why is that? Why? Why would you have it the same day as a patch? That's, that's you drawing, like, that's like freaking drawing from the well and then putting a well two feet next to it. But then two different people have claim over those wells. Like, they're going to be drawn from the same place and they're just going to be making, this is a water uh, analysis. What the hell's wrong? I can't think of a better analogy right now. The thing is, if you have a place where you draw from a, uh, from something for a resource, you have one next to it, then you're overdrawing that thing, which actually just screws you over. And so, by doing this, by having Smite and Paladins, Smite have this big patch and Paladins doing the bait at the same time, now you have people who could be playing both. Who, who could be really interested in both doing one or the other. Like, potential people who could get the Founders pack for Paladins are going to be playing the Smite patch because they really like to play Smite and they want to do Kiron. And same goes the other way. People who are in the Paladins beta, might not play the beta because they want to play Kiron. So it's a very odd choice of timing. I just don't get why they timed it that way. I, it's, I don't, I don't know. Not a fan of that. I'm also not a fan that there were no balancing this week. The reason for that, though, is because of the regionals, but, um, why? Why does that hold it out of the way? Like, making little tweaks here and there aren't a bad thing to do. Now, if they want to do some big changes, then fine, you wait until the season's done. But we're not there yet. You can still do minor tweaks here and there. I, they could still balance things out. There are still some glaring problems with the game's balance. We all know the problems, and we all get annoyed by it. Unless it's our main, then we uh, really enjoy it. The problem is, because I play every class, I get annoyed by all the imbalances, because I play everything. I see all the imbalances. I see where the game feels strong, where the game feels weak. And so it gets really annoying. And that is just my fault for playing everything and for analyzing the game so damn much. That's my fault right there, I guess. But it does give me an idea of just what everyone's feeling. I under I get a, a sense of what the ADC mains feel. I get a sense of what the support mains feel. What all the class mains feel. I get a sense of that. And it can be really annoying. And, and it got pointed out, which hasn't been pointed out in a while, that 
Arena is the main mode for Smite because high-res did it themselves. It's not about conquest toxi toxicity, which is a thing though, but there is some in Arena, but not as much. But the thing is, you start the game in Arena now. If you're a new player, you start in Arena. Conquest is just a side thing. Conquest concept is, is not a side thing in Dota or in League of Legends or in many other MOBAs. But in Smite, it is Arena that is the first one you see. So of course that's going to be your main mode. That's going to be your most comfortable mode. You don't have any inclination to learn Conquest. And so no surprise, Conquest doesn't have a big player base compared to Arena. No surprise at all. But the side effect of this is people treating Arena more hardcore, which is why I don't play hard Arena anymore, because Arena was the fun mode. Now it is the mode where if you saw the Kakulkin game, that is what you fight. And that is obnoxious to fight. And that is why I don't play Arena. Because I never run into the teams who are playing for fun. All I run into are the teams who are playing to freaking crush the enemy team. And that is not fun. That is too serious for me. Conquest is the serious place for me. Arena is supposed to be the place for fun, because that's what it was built originally. And now it's the more serious place. I'm like, no. No. And that's why we don't see that much Arena, because Arena is not fun for me anymore. It is a boring mess of tanky gods all over the place. It is not fun to me. And this is why Arena League is not a thing. Like, we've shown videos of it. I played Arena League when it was a thing. It was not worth playing, because it was a just very serious, and it was a lot of kill a lot of minions, wait till everyone's got their alts, and then one team would initiate the other, and then a bunch of alts came out, and then one side won or one side lost, or there was a wash, nothing really happened, and then it was back to everyone waiting a minute for the dang alts to come back. It was one initiation at a time in Arena. That is not what Arena was meant to be. Arena was meant to be just this big mess of combat. So that is very unfortunate. Incredibly. Now, uh, not Smite-related stuff. Uh, there's one thing Jinx wanted me to mention, that is Desert Bus. If you're not familiar with Desert Bus, that is by a sketch comedy group known as Loading Ready Run. They've been doing this. This is going to be their ninth one. They've been doing it every year. And it's just this big one-week event where they just have fun and do a bunch of comedy things, and they play a game called Desert Bus. And during the whole thing, they're very funny and very entertaining. They're bringing a lot of guests in. Uh... Taka from uh, Team Four Star has been there a few times. He might be there again. And just it's just, it's just a very fun thing they do. And it's a, ch a charity that they do for Child's Play. So it's a nice thing there. And Jinx just wanted me to mention it. We'll have it in the description. And it's just a cool thing. It's a live stream they do. It can be a full, a full week. 24 hour uh, each day. All the way for a full week. Starting was it this Saturday. So today when I'm recording it. Two Fridays. So yeah. Full seven days of them doing funny stuff to get charity money for Child's Play, so that's pretty cool. They've raised $2.4 million over the years, so uh, that's pretty great. That's nice. That's a cool thing for them to do. And so there's that if you want to check that out. You know what? Before we get into the, well, some recent things happened, but before we get into that, let's talk about, of course, something we haven't talked about in a couple weeks, maybe even months, and that is the Patreon. Patreon is a place there that, thanks to the support of some of our viewers, we are able to keep... Uh, Going with purchasing the bigger games, which is why we're able to afford StarCraft and Fallout 4, which is why we're playing both of them this month. And we'll be able to get Xenoblade Chronicles in December. So thank you to our patrons for that. Did not forget y'all. Thank you for your support with that. And because of them, the money we've been able to save up, we'll be able to get better hardware in the future. It's going to take a long time to be able to get a full computer rebuild. But we can at least buy pieces to make the computer better. And the video card is going to be the next pickup. So thank you to our patrons for that, and if you want to support, you can go to Patreon, the link will be in the description. You can help us out there. There are some bonus things that come out there. Jinx is going to do a monthly write-up on just her view of things, so if you want to see more of Jinx, there's your chance there. And I put some practice stuff up there. Jinx put some practice stuff up there as well. Sketches, there's some practice for videos and things like that. So you get to see some things that you wouldn't see anywhere else. Haven't done any lately because life's been really busy with internships. But I'm going to get back into that so we can see more voice acting practice and just more video experimentation. We'll see plenty of that at the Patreon. Since I mentioned Patreon, I should bring up why monetization is so important to a content creator. Because it's been a while. And the thing is, people think of money is not a very good thing. This is the thing about money. For a content creator, it creates the opportunity to do more. Now, what that means is, because like some people think, like, oh, they just want money so they can do this or that. Like, no, no, no. For content creators, money lets them do more. Without the money we make from Patreon, we would not be able to buy indie games and we would not be able to buy AAA games. And you need to have a lot of games to be able to just do your content going forward. 
Because we've never been an exclusively Smite channel. That's it. We just haven't been. Because you don't... Like, you want to have, like, a good thing that you do for a, a long time just to ground things, but you also want to do a lot of other stuff as well. That's why we've always done LPs. We've always done the one-shots. We've never been only Smite. We've always been a lot of things. That's what I always want to be, is just a lot of things. So you have a lot of different stuff you can see. The indie games you can see, some of the not really AAA, but almost their AAA games, like Vermintide. That's a really good game. It's an indie game, but it's a, a higher quality than you would expect from indie, which is a weird way to say it, because the thing about indie is it ranges. Indie goes from, like, one person to a team, and sometimes a really big team, and the quality can vary. One guy can make an amazing-looking game, and a team can make a bad-looking game, but they could still both be really good, like, just... Look-wise, or mechanics-wise, or gameplay-wise, there's a lot of things that could be good or bad in an indie game because that's just how it is. It's such a varied field. AAA comes with a certain expectation, so does indie, and so that's what happens there with those things. And with the help of the money we have, we're able to get games for giveaways and such, and this is what I need to lead into, because I just remembered I want to talk about this. December! It is going to be the giveaway month for sure, because it's December, Christmas time. Here's what we're going to do. Every single video in December will have a giveaway attached to it. And the way to enter is you just put up a comment. Now I'm going to put a video out here to explain it in the future, before December, and that is you just make a comment on a video in December, any of them. And, but you want to comment on all of them if you want a chance at this, basically. You comment on that video and you're entering to win an indie game uh, from that one as an entry. Like, let's say we do, how many do we do a month? We do a lot of videos a month. Let's say, let's just double it. 30 days, 60 games then. Let's say 60 videos come out in December. Each day is an entry to get into a different indie game. We have a good number of indie games that we've bought and also been donated to us that we can give away about 60 games in December as a Christmas thing. So that's what's going to happen. So every Smite video, you make a comment there. You have an entry to win an indie game based on that one. So Smite video on Monday... You say a comment there, whatever you talk about there. Try to make it relevant. Whatever you talk about there. And you're entered to win any game based on that day. And also any other, vid like an LP video there, which will be Fallout. So let's use Monday as an example. So uh, any given Monday into December, it'll be t an LP and Smite gameplay. So you got Smite and Fallout. That'll be there. If you make a comment in Smite, you're entered to win any game from that one. And if you make a comment in Fallout, you're entered to win an indie game from a different indie game. They're not based on the days. A different indie game. So, that's how it's going to be. Every single video gives you a chance to win a different indie game. We have a lot of indie games we're going to give them away. And we also have a couple AAA games that have been donated to us as well. So it's not just indie games. I shouldn't word it that way. It's a lot of games. There's going to be indie games and AAA games. All this stuff. It's all going to be in December. And here's how, the, how it's going to work is all videos up to the 25th I'm going to go ahead and do all the giveaways uh, that... So what happens is you, you comment, you comment, you comment, you comment, you comment, you comment, you comment. But you're not going to get them right away. On the 25th or 26th, I can't remember when Christmas is right now because... Oh my god, when is Christmas? It, Christmas Eve is 25th, Christmas 26th, right? I'm not wrong here, right? 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 So the 26th, 26th. So 26th, that's Christmas Day, right? We're just going to assume that and we're not going to edit this out. Um, So Christmas Day, it is Christmas Day, sir. Um, it is Christmas Day. Um, on that day, I will go through all the videos and randomly select a winner from each one and then give all these games out on the 26th. Now, all comments on, like, 26th to the 31st. Is it 31st, right? It's, it's 31st in December, right? The 31st, all those, we'll do the giveaways on the, on, on the New Year's. That's when I'll do those. So, you're not going to get them right away, whatever day you're commenting on. You're going to get them... On Christmas Day. That's when I'm going to do all the random picks. On the comments. And please make your comments kind of relevant to whatever the heck it is. Don't just comment. Don't say just say first or tenth. Just make an actual comment. It'd be good to have some real conversation there if possible. It'd be really cool there. But that's what we're going to do. I figure that's just the easiest way to enter people into a thing. As if they make a comment on a video. I think that's just the easiest way to do it. And we'll do... Uh, we'll send all the... All the games out through YouTube's messaging system. That's how we'll do it. So that's what's going to happen there. So if you win, you win. You lose, you lose. Well, you don't lose. You just don't win, basically. There's no losing in this. And, and giving everyone a chance to get some free games. That's pretty much it. A win for everyone, even if you don't get one. Because you know someone's enjoying something, so that's good. And that'll be the plan for a December giveaway. And I think it's a pretty good idea. And now, the debate I'm having is... 
how do we let people know throughout December? Do we put up like a 30 second uh, bumper at the start? Uh, like 30 second video at the start? Maybe try to go 10, 15 seconds instead, not 30 seconds, but like a thing at the start saying, here's what's going on. It's going to be, we're doing a December giveaway. Just make a comment and you're entered to win an indie game. And every video will have a separate indie game that you could win. Like, maybe something like that. Do that every single video. Do that every couple videos. Uh, what is the better way? What, is you, what are your all, y'all's opinions on that? What do you think would work out? I, I think it may be every video because then new people don't know when, if they just show up. And then they'll know then because maybe they didn't see one of the other videos. Or should it just be every couple videos so it doesn't get annoying? And I, don't, I hope it, was, it doesn't get annoying, but it doesn't just every time you just have to see this thing every time. I don't know. The start of every video is me saying I'm the host, so I don't... There is already some... You hear the same thing every time at the start. I just... I don't know. So give your opinions on that, because I'm... Here's what y'all think before we go forward with this, since it's not December yet. We're in the middle of November. So yeah, there you go. So there's really only one heavy topic to talk about right now, or... Well, there's probably others, but the one that comes to everyone's minds right now, because it's super-duper recent, is Paris. I was at work when Paris happened. And so everyone at work was, you know, not very happy when they were learning the news and everyone was just looking at their phones while working, which is dangerous as hell when you're working with heavy machinery. By the way, we have a machine that, uh, co-worker was like, yeah, um, don't touch that. If the guard's off, it will rip your arm off. I'm like, ha ha, uh, you're, you're jo no, he's not joking. Okay. Okay. All right. Good to know. Um, quick thing before we talk about Paris. My job is ridiculous. And if you watch, if you read the Twitter, uh, I talk about how ridiculous it is. Every day is a chance of me getting killed, and it's not even, like, I'm not even kidding. There are some very dangerous things, and humor is a good way to feel less stressed about it. Um, let's see, I almost died of asphyxiation yesterday, the day before uh, some chemicals spilled out, and they got far enough that they could have caused a fire that would have led back to their tanks, which would have killed us all. That was great. Um, there was... There was an unfortunate uh, electrical failure that could have led to an explosion. Luckily, we uh, took care of that. My job is dangerous. It is a stupidly dangerous job. And then things around it are also happening that are very dangerous. Right now, they're dynamiting the mountains to make more room. So you just hear explosions now and then. And the problem with that is um, when those are happening, you got to make sure the, nothing's happening in the plant. Because, well, anything could happen in the plant. It's a very... A very interesting job and how dangerous it is and how much I wish it wasn't so dangerous. There's a lot of ways I can get killed on my job. There's a lot of ways. It's an internship, by the way. I'm not even getting paid really heavy for this. Those The, the guys who are actually in the job, they make pretty good money. And it's pretty nice, and I, that's why I'm trying to get into that position, because it'd be a good amount of money, and it's a, it's a pretty good thing. It's, it's a good public servant job. A very good public servant job, because everyone needs water. But it's a very dangerous job. It's extremely dangerous. You can be crushed. You can be electrocuted. You can be cut in half. You can be cut in many other places. You can be. You can take toxins in through your through your bloodstream, through breathing, through your eyes. There's a lot of different ways you can die in this job. And then there's snakes and rats and spiders. Lots of spiders. Lots of spiders. Um, coyotes, wolves, mountain lions. We have so far not seen a mountain lion, but they're out there. So that's that's great because we're out in the mountains. We're in a secret base in the mountains. By the way, all government buildings, the really sensitive ones, are all secret. You can't see them on satellites through Google or anything. They're they're stricken from all the maps. That's that's what that's how it works. They are hidden as best they can be for the most part to prevent well people knowing where they are so they can go after them. So I'm I'm always at a secret location, which is an interesting thing. But because of that secret location, um, there are no cell phone resurfaces for the most part usually. To keep them extra secure, so that you know there can't be any communications through there. Um, there are it's all through gra ground lines and stuff like that. That's that's how it works. So that it's very secure. There's phones everywhere for communication, but cell phone service is complete crap in most of these locations on purpose because of that to keep it protected. Same thing goes for military bases. Bases they do the same thing, and so it's a very dangerous job, but it's a very good job. It's a very good public servant job, and it does pay pretty well. And so I'm trying to get into there, but I'm just an intern. Who makes crap money. I basically make gas money. That's what I do. And lunch money. That's it. That's not a lot. But the hope is when I actually get a job. I just spread the wealth. Uh, we're not even talking about Paris. I'm talking about this. I've talked about this a few times. Um, when I get a job. I'm spreading the wealth as much as I can. We'll be doing more, even more giveaways than we do now. We're doing a lot of giveaways. But we're going to do even more of them. 
And I want to commission artists because I really, I really like a lot of artists, and I want to commission them and probably commission them to just make some really cool art for the channel. That'd be nice, or just really cool art in general, stuff like that. It'd be really good to reach out to a bunch of artists in the future, get a good relationship with them, and just have stuff made, which would in which would just be cool for myself and just for the channel if we can get some really cool stuff. Same thing goes for musical stuff. Like we had Edge do our outro. It'd be cool to be able to get more outro musics. Or even some intro music. It'd be great to just be able to support some sort of musical person or two. Edge right now isn't making anything. Uh, their their family grounded them when it comes to music because they felt they were doing it too much. They're really good. Edge is really good. So it's too bad. Um, yeah. Uh, so dialing it back to Paris. So everyone was really unhappy about Paris. And, and it's very dangerous to be distracted. So for the most part, we did like less dangerous work. Because everyone was really distracted by Paris. And as, as we were working... More news came out, and just more sad things came out, and it was just very unfortunate. And it wasn't like Paris was the only place, it's just Paris was the biggest one. There was also the attack on Lebanon, 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 Lebanon. There was also, of course, the earthquake in Japan. It didn't hit Japan, it was off the coast. This is the thing, people don't know. It was off the coast, it wasn't in Japan, it was off the coast. What the real fear is a tsunami hitting, because tsunamis have been very scary in Japan. So, that's the fear right now, I don't know if it hit or not by the time you see this, or it didn't hit at all if there was no tsunami. But when a big quake happens, tsunamis are the fear, especially if it's off the coast. Because that that's how that works. There was a lot of miscommunication there because Japan has had so many disasters. People thought the earthquake was inland and that it killed a bunch of people, but it was offland. It might have, maybe, can still cause some trouble even out there, but it's not as bad as it could have been if it was in Japan. Like, like in the center of it, you know what I mean? So Paris is the big one, and a lot of people died and all this stuff, and of course there's going to be a lot of fear-mongering, there's going to be a lot of depression, there's going to be a lot of despair, a lot of other feelings, and talked about it on Twitter. We can feel a lot of things about this. We can feel anger, sadness, despair, depression, rage, hatred. There's a lot of feelings we can feel from this. The important ones that we should not feel for too long are hatred, despair, and depression. Hatred because, well, hatred is not a good thing. It continues the cycle of violence. That's just how that is. Despair is the loss of hope, and we can never lose hope. That is not something we should ever lose, because when you become hopeless, then nothing is going to happen. You will not believe you're able to do more than you can, and that just, well, then less people to help out. And depression is kind of the same thing in that. When you're depressed, you don't do anything. And so the depressed would not, will not be able to do anything to help out or anything like that, and that's not good. It's not good at all. Depression keeps you down and just makes you do nothing. And you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. So that is what's, what I feel about this whole thing is don't let it change you negatively, I guess. Positively, sure, but not negatively. And the negative influences would be giving to hatred, giving to despair, and giving to depression. The empathy coming out, the solidarity people are showing, those are good things. You can feel anger, you can feel sadness, you can feel a lot of emotions, but the extremes of hatred and despair and depression are the ones that I would caution against being in for too long. And of course, making a point that is an obvious point, that is um, hatred and terrorism and evil and all that stuff doesn't have a religion. It is not Islam promoting this, it is people misusing it. And the same thing goes for a lot of other religions. There are Buddhists right now over was it, Myanmar who are just slaughtering people as well. They're extremists in a lot of different things. you got extremists even in our own country. Well, in my country, the U.S. People are way too fanatical about Christianity or or any other religion. Just that, are, that will take things too far. We haven't had a big mass murder based on Christianity in a long time here. But they happen. They will happen at like likely at some point just because fanaticism has no real thing. It is they, Fanaticism is a human thing. Extremism is a human thing. That is what it is. And whatever they use behind it, that is just something they're using behind it. It might have somehow caused a catalyst, but that is partially by just the crazy using it in whatever way they want. So many things get bastardized and used in the wrong way. It is frustrating. Very frustrating. Extremely, extremely frustrating. But we can't let a cycle of violence continue through ignorance and through hatred. Because it's a lot of people just acting like Islam is just... It just wants to kill everybody. Of course it's not wanting to kill everybody. It's just jerks misusing it. And pointing that out. And of course we're opening a can of worms by even talking about it. I don't know what the comments are going to talk about with this, but I feel it's pretty straightforward. The effed up people who did Paris were just effed up people. What they were using to justify what they were doing was just that. They were abusing something to justify their actions. 
Maybe they completely believe in what they're doing. Maybe they completely believe it. Maybe they completely believe this warped version of it all. It is not the religion's fault for that. It is people's fault. It is maybe, I don't, like we can't, we shouldn't even try to get in the heads of the, of the people who do this. At least I shouldn't. Experts in, in counterterrorism, of course, they're going to be doing that. But I'm just a guy. I'm not going to assume what the hell the reasoning behind it should I, huh? But we cannot believe that this is a normal thing. Because it isn't. There are billions and billions of people who believe in many religions. And a small number of them have bastardized them and used them in the wrong way. They are not the representation of these religions. They are very much an extreme misuse of them. And that is the big takeaway from that is, these are people misusing things and bastardizing them in a very wrong way. This is not the norm for any religion to be slaughtering people, to be killing people, to terrorize people, to create fear. That is not a norm to religions. That is for sure. And it doesn't even have to be a religion. It can be just whatever group that believes in whatever thing, not even a religious thing, that can be fanatical and cause horrible situations for the rest of the world. You can look at us as a big number, like, oh, we only lost a couple, but it's still... Everyone's important. Everyone is. That's the truth of it. You're as important as I am. I'm as important as you are. They're as important as I am. They're as important as you are. Like, there you go. But it really sucks when some of us take it to the wrong way. When some of us kill someone else. It sucks. And it's wrong. We know it's wrong. Why it's called murder. A lot of people are dying every day from whatever reason. Disease, famine, murder, more murder, a bunch of other murders, old age, murder again. A lot of people are dying for a lot of reasons. And the one that would be great is not murder. And of course, fighting disease and famine and, and all those things. Like, it'd be great if people didn't die for... We just died from old age, that'd be great, you know? But it's not perfect world yet. I say yet because I believe we can always do better. And maybe we will. We can also do worse. But maybe we won't do that, huh? How about we not do worse? It'd be great. Look, we're all precious little snowflakes, okay? <laughs> like, we're all important. I'm just rambling at this point, so let's just cut this. In. Let's end this already. We're all important people. Come on. Even those assholes who are trolls, you know, fuck them, but still, you know, they're people. Don't wish anything really ill on them. Wish they have a bad day. Wish, um, they have bad Taco Bell. But I do not wish them to die. There's a different thing is, um, over all that data mining stuff, somebody wished Kret should kill himself. A couple of people actually wish he should kill himself. Not okay. Not okay. We know, especially with me. Not okay to wish anyone to kill themselves. Not alright. We say a lot of dumb things on the internet. We do a lot of dumb things on the internet. But of course, in the real world, I really hope we don't do some really dumb things, some of the people here, right? What did I even mean by that? Like, let's not kill each other. That'd be great. That's the more extreme thing of let's not be assholes. Let's not kill each other. I don't really think I have to worry about with my viewership, still. We can all be better gamers. We can all be better people in general. We can just do better in a lot of ways. And that's really, again, what is important to me. We all just do better. We all be better. And for this week, we not kill each other. Frustrating, it is. And that's why I'm still going with this whole thing. We talked about a lot on this vlog. We talk about a lot of things in these vlogs. It's just whatever I feel, whatever I'm thinking about. And there's just a lot of topics here, so Jinx is going to kill me for going for so damn long. But that is the vlog. I had fun making it. I hope you had fun watching and listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by. And see you next time, and maybe we'll have something that's happy to talk about one of these vlogs. It's a mix of both, always. It's just the end. This The second half is usually the more serious half. Well, the first half is Smite, games, and all that stuff. And I cannot wait to play Fallout 4. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Everyone's raving about it, and since I've been playing Fallout since 1, I know I'm going to enjoy it. I just don't know how much yet. But everyone says it's great, so I can't wait to play it. And we'll see the LP for that after StarCraft. So once again, that right there is the vlog. I had fun making it. hope you had fun watching it and listening to it. Thank you everyone for watching and for comments. And just for being there. Thank you very much. Thanks for being around, everybody. And thanks to Jinx for all of her hard work. There you go. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time.
careful. Your middle tower is under attack. Your middle tower has been destroyed. Yeah. Thank you.